This Acheron video is super late because sadly my summons went horribly and after 200 wishes spent, I ended up getting an E0S1 Jepard. I guess the game is forcing me to stay relatable. So after a week of building my E0 Acheron with S5 Good Night Sleep Well and testing her in Simulated Universe, Golden Gears, Memory of Chaos, and Pure Fiction, I can finally share my thoughts on her value to new or free-to-play players. I've also had the experience of trying her E2S1 and E6S5 from my support friends list, but this video is going to focus mostly on E0S0 Acheron because that's what I'm working with. However, for those who are curious about how her E6S5 performs, here's a couple clips of me doing weekly bosses with my friends E6 Acheron. I think Acheron is probably the most broken E6 character so far because she has all type resistance penetration and all type weakness breaks, so she's basically a universal DPS. Now for the more relatable E0S0 Acheron, my overall opinion is that everyone should definitely consider pulling for her because of a few reasons. She gives the highest screenshot damage that I have ever seen from an E0 character, and big damage numbers always feel good. She also does not rely on harmony supports, though she definitely still appreciates having them, but she makes great use of having nihility supports as well, which helps simplify team building and account planning since you no longer have to fight for the same supports. Third. She saves so much time in the overworld and in simulated universe modes because you can completely skip fights with her technique. Just for this feature alone, I would recommend her wholeheartedly. It saves so much time. And I know people meme on not having enough trick snacks, but there's literally an assignment option that lets you get both ingredients at once, so you can just use that as your fourth assignment slot and use whatever you get from it to craft more trick snacks. I don't usually promote characters unless they are clearly insane, like Ron May or Sparkle, but for Acheron, I consider her the first DPS character that I fully recommend because she's a top DPS character with incredible quality of life, and I can only see her getting stronger with future support. What makes her even better is that she is quite good in literally every game mode currently released that could be considered difficult by the casual player base. Memory of Chaos becomes a cakewalk with Acheron, Simulated Universe becomes a joke, and Pure Fiction is clearable if you can generate stacks quickly enough before the time runs out because she can one-shot each wave. I would say that Pure Fiction is her weakest role at E0S0 with limited supports, since it comes down to how many times you can get her ult off before the timer runs out, but I was still able to get 40k points using Acheron, so it's not like she struggles in Pure Fiction that much. So for context, my account isn't really ideal for Acheron. The only two Nihility teammates I have built are Pella and Welt, so those are the only teammates I can test her with. I don't have Kafka, Black Swan, or Silver Wolf, who I know can make her feel better in certain scenarios, but even with what I have available, I still had a decent experience. My setup should be relatable to most people, though I know some people don't have Welt, but in that case, you could just replace them with Gunaifen best team I found was Acheron, Pelo, Welt, and Ranmei personally, because Ranmei is just insane, and with the Welt Ranmei duo breaking and delaying enemies, I don't need a sustain. I know new players won't have Ranmei, so I'll show how Acheron does with Fire MC instead in MOC12, because that is the most relatable team for newbies, and it will give a baseline idea of how Acheron feels at lower ends of investment. This team of Akron, Pella, Welt, and Fire MC feels a little troll because Welt is pretty redundant here. He is only here to fill the 2 Nihility teammate slot requirement, and he's pretty much dead weight outside of stacking debuffs and his retribution on his ultimate, which is a 12% vulnerability debuff. Welt's crowd control isn't valued here at all because we already have a sustain with Fire MC, so if you have someone like Black Swan or Silver Wolf, they would probably be stronger than Welt here. Or if we ever get a dedicated Acheron support, Welt will be the easiest to replace on this team. So how this team works is that Pella carries the sweaty cone that lets her basic attacks apply debuffs. If you don't have this cone, then Pella's E4 lets her skill apply a debuff, but this consumes more skill points, which is a huge problem in this team, since Acheron, Welt, and Fire MC all need their skill for their debuffs. That's why the sweaty cone is highly recommended, because it saves on skill points. Fire MC is here for his taunt ability, which is considered a debuff. He can also carry the trend of the Universal Market Light Cone that applies the debuff every time he gets hit, as long as the enemies aren't resistant to burns, of course. And he should get hit often since he has the taunt. 
Again, the only problem with this taunt is that it requires a skill point to activate, and Welt's debuff also requires skill points, and Akron wants to use this skill as well, so you'll often find yourself in a position where you're short on skill points with this team. Japard can be a good replacement for our Fire MC because Japard inherently has increased aggro, so you don't need to use a skill to get enemies to target him. However, Japard's freeze debuff is also tied to a skill, but usually you should be able to get by without having to skill with Japard, as long as you carry the trend Lycone. So if you have Japard, he's not a bad Fire MC replacement, he definitely can be more skill point friendly. And also his shields are just beefier, so you're even less worried about dying. The overall concept of this team is to have all three teammates outside of Acheron generate her ultimate charges so that she can just ultimate as frequently as possible. This team is decent, it managed to clear MLC 12 in 4 turns, which isn't super amazing but also not horrible. But if this is your best setup with Acheron, then you won't really feel that overpowered. So replacing Fire MC with Ran Mei takes this team to another level because here Welt's sustainability actually becomes useful, and Ran Mei enables Welt to be a secondary DPS by boosting his personal damage. While I haven't been able to zero cycle MLC 12 yet with this team, I did get very comfortable one cycle clears that are consistent, with the only fails happening when enemies repeatedly target Akron or Pella and kill them prematurely. In pure fiction, with my limited access of support characters, I actually struggle to clear with Akron. I just generate sacks a bit too slowly, but what I did do was drop Welt for Herda so that I can run a duo DPS team so that the burden of clearing this isn't solely on Acheron's shoulders now that I have two carries that can wipe out waves and then that was able to get me my 40k points. And just to test consistency I did do this a couple of times and I got 40k on every single try. I also was able to get 40k on both the past Pure Fiction and the current Pure Fiction. So. The buffs don't matter too much. My overall thoughts on Acheron are a little complicated. Just because you do see noticeable differences with her Eidolons, but considering how powerful she is at E0, her Light Cone and Eidolons push her into a game-breaking level of power. Acheron is definitely still the strongest we've seen at E0, and I will be surprised if they release a stronger character than her within the year. Obviously supports are a different story because these games are usually based around supports, but Akron seems to perform very, very well with limited support options. She outputs incredible screenshot damage, she can easily one-shot entire waves of enemies with her ultimate, and I've definitely seen my largest damage numbers with Akron. She makes use of non-harmony supports very well, meaning you can easily build two teams on your account, one for Acheron, a nihility based team, and then a harmony based team with a traditional carry, or like a damage over time team. Outside of combat, her instant mob kills is a huge time saver, and just for that alone I think everyone should consider at least one copy of Acheron. She makes simulated universe and story stuff so much quicker because you can just skip overworld fights. I think my main complaint comes down to how fast you can charge up her ultimate, since that's where majority of her damage comes from. If you can't charge up her ult fast enough, then your clear times will suffer. And with how few accessible nihility supports there are for Akron at this current moment, the only truly accessible option is Pella. So an E0 S0 Akron may have some trouble generating stacks quickly enough. This is easily remedied with E2 or her signature light cone, and if you have both, then it's completely a non-issue. But that's when we start dipping into whale territory. Though if you are free to play and want to vertically invest in a character, I would say either Ranmei E1 or Acheron E2S1, they're probably the most worth it in my eyes. Not only does Acheron's E2 increase her stack generation, it also lets you drop a nihility character for a harmony buffer. So someone like Sparkle or Ranmei. This is quite meaningful in the current state of HSR just because these harmony supports are so much better than their alternatives. But I think the value in her E2 will go down once proper dedicated 5 star nihility supports release that fully synergize with Acheron. Like imagine a nihility path debuffing sustain. So like Huo Huo or Gallagher, but they're on the nihility path. 
or some sort of nihility character that can repeatedly apply debuff super quickly to battery Acheron, or a nihility action advance character, or some variant of a 5 star Pella, or like a Pella Silver Wolf hybrid where they have like an AoE shred, but at the same time their basic attacks can also apply debuffs without the need of a sweaty cone. The 2 nihility teammate restriction only feels limiting right now because we don't have enough nihility supports at the tier of Ranmei or Sparkle, but if we eventually get one at that level, then Akron's E2 becomes less of a necessity in my opinion, and the faster stack generation may be solved with new characters coming out, and so E2 right now seems very strong at this moment in time. I just don't know if it will continue being that valuable going forward. Because with my E0 Acheron, I'm clearing everything already lights out. So I don't think E2 is actually that necessary. Although I will say her E6 is like a night and day difference because you gain even more all type resistance penetration. And basically every part of her kit acts like an ultimate now. And that's, that's really broken. If you take her all the way to E6, you'll definitely be set for life with at least one team. It's just stupid broken, ignores all the resistances. She literally becomes a brute force and win character. You can throw her at anything and she'll just delete them. In summary, I think Akron is very powerful and is probably the most recommended DPS unit as of now. She can be used to brute force content even at E0. She likely isn't even near her power ceiling, which is kind of scary to think about. As more nihility characters release, she will definitely improve with time. Similar to how Kafka slowly improved the more DOT characters released. Also, this current banner is great for new players since you get both Pella and Gallagher, two units that synergize quite well with Acheron. And if you don't have a Welt, you can pick up Gwenaifen from the drink event that's currently going on. Gwenaifen's a solid placeholder unit, I think, until we get a true dedicated Acheron support. I'll continue building and testing my Akron to see if I can eventually zero cycle with her on my Copium account. Also for those who have been watching recent videos about the HSR community and advice for new players, I think the problem is that a lot of guide makers, they get to build and test a bunch of characters without realizing that a lot of free to play players or new players, they're restricted in the amount of materials they have. So they can't just build every character. And they don't have 20 different relic sets lying around at plus 15 that they can just swap. Like, oh, you can just use this set on this character for this situation and then swap to like this set for this situation. Because a lot of the times what happens is certain characters are recommended to be built a certain way for MLC content. But then if you want to use them in other content, you need to swap their relics to fit the other content. And then in that scenario, it's just like not feasible. Even me as a day one player, I don't have extra relics sitting around that I can just throw onto characters because of because of how limited Trailblaze power is. And that's kind of the reason I created my channel is because I was a little annoyed at how many channels gas up every new character, like they're the next best thing when it's clear that sometimes they're not really the best fit for an account. And while I am all for playing who you enjoy, some characters clearly feel better to use, and that's something that shouldn't really be overlooked.